Tonight, we hear the story of the women who were closest to Jesus going to the tomb so that they might complete the ritualistic preparations of Jesus' body for burial. Preparations they were not able to complete before the beginning of the Passover. And of their finding the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. Now, they had been there when Jesus was taken down from the cross. And they were there when he was placed in the tomb and the stone rolled in front of the opening. So to find the stone rolled away and the tomb empty, except for some linen lying where Jesus once lay, they must have really been shaken. The only reason for a missing body that came to mind was somebody had stolen it. Even though Jesus had told them he would rise again, I am not too sure they really believed him. At least, not until the angel said, Why are you looking for the dead, uh, living among the dead? Only then, remembering the words of Jesus, do they hurry off to tell the other disciples. Can you imagine their excitement? I suspect they come bursting into that room where the disciples were, each yelling about what they had seen and what they heard. Beyond the cultural issues women faced in, in Israel, is it any wonder that Peter would roll his eyes at the thought of such a wild and crazy story? Still, we have to give Peter some credit. Despite, despite being nicknamed The Rock, he sensed something in their story that motivated him to get up and go to the tomb. And notice, he doesn't walk. He runs. If tradition holds, he would have been in the upper room, the same place that he and the disciples ate that last supper with Jesus, a place about three quarters of a mile from where Jesus was buried. Now, according to John's account of this night, John runs with Peter and actually out runs him. He gets there first, but John doesn't enter. It's Peter who boldly sticks his head into the tomb, finding it empty in the linen, just like the women had told him. Scripture says Peter left that tomb amazed. I think that's an understatement. Once again, Peter finds himself dumbfounded by what is happening. And he returns with the other disciple to the other room, where it is likely he found himself a corner to go sit and think about the repercussions, the ramifications of what has just happened. We've had the benefit of 2,000 years of explanation about those ramifications. And still we wonder, is it really possible? Could someone who has beaten as badly as Jesus was beaten, who was then crucified and buried, really come back to life? I believe the answer is yes. If I didn't, I couldn't stand up here preaching to tell you that not only is it possible, but that it was later witnessed by those closest to him and by hundreds of others. And that because he did rise to new life, we have been given hope in sharing that new life with him. Something our baptism reminds us. In just a few moments, hang in there guys, it's coming. <laughs> We're going to join those who are going to be baptized when we reaffirm the vows 
we have made before. Vows to be faithful in our relationships with God and one another. To seek help when we are lost. To boldly share the good news of hope that we know. All the while striving for justice and peace in the community. And not just this community, but the wider community that surrounds us. And after we do so, we will hear the words that remind us that because we are loved, we are given grace to share in the resurrection we celebrate this night. We've done nothing to earn this grace. Not even being baptized gives us any special privilege. But in baptism, where our relationship with God is made clear, where we symbolically die and rise to new life in Jesus Christ, we are then marked as one of Christ's own forever. And being marked, we are given hope. Hope in a life where our earthly weaknesses no longer have power over us. Hope in a love that is shared through this grace. And hope in the promise that whatever challenges we face in life, we will not face them alone. Because God in Christ is with us always. Something else. Just as we know Christ is in our midst, during Holy Communion, his living presence can be felt in baptism too. Maybe more so on a night like this, when we come together to hear what some think of as impossible. The resurrection of Jesus. If it is possible, and as I said, I believe it is, that anything is possible with God, including the outpouring of grace that helps us know what real forgiveness is like. And knowing God's forgiveness, we are then able to know God's love. Amen.